Welcome to your practice, a special class designed for indigestion, clearing the intestinal tract, making space, bringing freedom. Welcome. We're going to start in a supine pose called Supta Balakonasan. And so for this pose, you will need a bolster and you will need a blanket folded in half. This will be for the neck, for the head. So put that blanket right at the end of the bolster and then taking a strap, which we're going to be using, and then two blocks, one block that's going to go underneath the outside edge of each thigh to help the groins be supported in their opening. So taking a seat on the end of the bolster, bring your legs to Barakonasan and you have two heights for the blocks. Choose the height that suits your groins. Sitting right on the end of the bolster, then making the strap into a big loop that you can put over you. And having put that strap over you, go ahead and take the end of the strap. You might need to unbuckle a little bit. My strap was a little too short. And hook it over the outside edges of your feet. And then tighten the strap. And make sure that the back of the strap is right on the back of the hip so it gives traction to pull the buttocks towards the feet. Then coming off the bolster, coming onto the floor, moving your blocks with you, re-tighten the strap, re-tuck the hips. And then begin to lie down so the bolster is right in the center of the back. Lift your buttocks, move them towards your heels so you feel that traction and the front abdomen lengthening. The shoulders rolled back, make sure the blanket is right underneath the neck, the head. And then the arms extended to the side. Closing the eyes. And with an exhalation, relax and release the entire body down into the ground, feeling that openness. Allowing the frame of the body to melt over the bolster, to melt over the blocks. Allow the pubic bone to broaden, to widen, the abdomen broadening, softening, resting. Make sure that the buttocks are moving towards the heels and that the anus faces the heels directly. Once you've experienced this, the anus facing the heels, draw the pubic bone up to the navel, then draw the navel in a line up to the sternum and then draw the sternum up to the collarbones and feel a new broadness coming to the diaphragm, to the lungs, to the sternum plate, to the front chest. Keep allowing the front shoulders to roll back, the front shoulder girdle to roll back completely, the trapezius muscles to be moving down the back, and the back armpit to be moving to the front armpit, in this way creating that spiral in the arms that optimizes the opening of the chest. If the groins feel strained in any way, just move the blocks onto one edge higher so that the outer edges of the thighs are more supported and you'll find that the groins can release and relax more deeply in this way. Having a soft, smooth inhalation and a soft, long, passive exhalation, release and relax the body more and more to the ground. And now go ahead and stretch the arms straight behind you, the palms facing each other, the arms completely parallel. Move the trapezius muscles down the back and by stretching the arms, stretch the side waist, stretch the abdomen and then bending the elbows with your fingers, hold on to the elbow tips and resettle the forearms down to the blanket. Keep the fingertips firm on the elbows so they're gently pulling the elbow tips to the wall behind you and down and look for an experience of more and more length in the trunk, in the left waist, in the right waist, in the front abdominal cavity. Begin to feel the demarcation between the front ribs and the upper abdomen. Normally this area is very congested and compressed. We can't feel the space between them. In Supine Baddha Konasan, you can really make the experience. And keep lifting the front ribs away from the top abdomen and keep dropping the top abdomen down towards the groins so that there becomes a space between the top abdomen and the bottom ribs. Long, soft inhalation. Long, passive exhalation. With each exhalation, spread the evenness of the breath to the left, to the right, so that both sides of the body have an even sensation of the stream of breath moving through. Make sure that the buttocks are still moving towards the heels, the anus is still facing the heels, and in this way the pubic bone won't drop. You keep drawing the pubic bone up to the sternum, lengthening the abdominal cavity, stretching the waists. And now re-stretch your arms straight behind you. Look for more length in the waist, more length in the trunk. And having found that, bend the elbows, change the cross of the arms. And again, holding onto the elbows, settle the forearms down to the blanket. Relax and quiet in the entire face, allowing the front face to recede backwards into the back skull. Feel the jaw soft, the root of the tongue passive. 
the eyelids flowing down towards the cheeks and the eyeballs resting in the eye sockets. Re-relax the groins, the hips, the pubic bone, feeling that wideness, feeling that broadness. And as the groins and the hips and the pubic bone widen, feel how this affects the abdomen, how it begins to get broad and wide and long, more space, more freedom for the organs, for the digestive organs, for the organs of excretion. Maintain that smooth and even breath, the pacification of the face, the relaxation of the skin fibers, of the muscle fibers. And observe the touch of the breath inside the body everywhere, using the breath to dissolve, to release congestion where needed, to unlock, to bring light and prana to areas that are dark and folded and tight. And then just releasing the grip of the fingertips on the elbows, extend the arms out to the side, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And now bring the palms to the front trunk, to the front abdomen. Slowly emerging, hands to the floor, gently, gently pushing yourselves back up to seated Barakonasan. Unhook the strap off the feet, take the strap off the body. And come out of Supta Barakonasan. So our next pose is going to be a version of Supavirasan. We're going to do one leg at a time. So you're going to need a block. And go ahead and put the block so that you can sit on it. Your left leg will be in Virasan. Make sure to pull the calf out to the side so the back of the knee is free. And the right foot is on the floor, the knee facing up to the sky. Then make sure your bolster is right behind you in the middle. Lift the buttocks and move the buttocks towards the knees, towards the feet as you lie down. Come onto your forearms. Just check, see if you can lift the buttocks again, move them towards the knees so the lumbar has length, and then lie down on the bolster, pulling in the blanket to support the neck and the head. And again, bringing the arms above the head, bending the elbows and holding onto your elbows, placing the forearms on the blanket. So very important to keep moving the buttocks towards the knees so the lumbar doesn't overarch, the lumbar doesn't come into the back. And with that action, again, you can find how the pubic bone can lift up to the sternum. This is the action that broadens and lengthens the abdominal cavity and that brings release to the digestive tract. Keep experiencing that. With each inhalation, draw the navel up to the front ribs. With each exhalation, move the trapezius down the back, the buttocks towards the knees, towards the heels. Keep the fingertips on the elbows slightly firm to pull, to pull the elbows back, to bring that length to the waist, length to the trunk. Keep stretching the arms, bringing length to the armpit chest. And now extending the arms out to the side, using the hands to gently push yourself up. We're going to change sides. So our right leg is now going to come into half vidasan. So bring the foot by the outside edge of the right hip and make sure to move the calf muscle so that the back of the knee has space. And beginning the descent now keeping the chest open, lifting the buttocks up, moving them towards the feet, towards the knees as you come down. So always the front body has more length than the back body. Settling, finding the blanket, the bolster, adjusting so everything feels even, and then changing the cross of the arms above the head and resettling the forearms down to the blanket. Make sure the buttocks, the sacrum are moving towards the knees, towards the feet. And then move the tailbone up to the pubic bone and draw the pubic bone with the inhalation all the way up to the front ribs, the sternum. Pull with your fingertips on your elbows to pull the elbow tips back to stretch the triceps, the upper arms, then to stretch the armpit chest, the skin of the armpit. And from there to stretch the side trunk, the skin of the side trunks, the side waist. Keep feeling that space between the bottom ribs and the top of the abdomen. The top of the abdomen descending, the abdomen resting on the spine but you're pulling to lengthen the trunk so the chest is getting broadness and the abdominal cavity is lengthening more and more. At first we feel this in a kind of tearing sensation on the skin of the front abdomen, so pull more to get that tearing sensation. And these are the skin fibers stretching and then slowly underneath the muscle fibers will start to release and true freedom starts to be felt. And then extending the arms back out to the side of the body using the hands and gently pushing yourselves back out and releasing. So continuing this stretching of the abdominal cavity work, take the bolster and move it so that it's now horizontal, no longer vertical. 
and take your blanket, unfold it, and place it on the floor on the other side of the bolster. Then sitting in front of the bolster, cross your ankles, your right ankle in front of your left. This is the first position. If you can come to half Padmasan, bring the right leg to Padmasan. And if you can come to full Padmasan, bring the left leg on top. So you have three versions to choose from, either crossed ankles, half Padmasan, or full Padmasan. And then regardless of where you are, take the strap and pull it over your legs so the outer edges of the thighs are supported. And then preparing to lie back. When you lie back, you want to find that right spot where the bolster is just on the middle upper back. And then you're going to begin to find the blanket with your hands and to make a roll with the blanket so that the cervical spine is supported. So if the head doesn't have any strain in hanging back. So rolling the blanket, supporting the back of the neck. And then bring the arms behind, bending the elbows, finding again your elbow tips with your hands. Press the roots of the thighs down towards the floor. The buttocks moving towards the heels. The tailbone moving towards the pubic bone and the pubic bone lengthening up the abdominal cavity, broadening the front ribs, lifting up to the sternum, broadening the breasts, the nipples, broadening the sternum, trapezius muscles rolling down the back, keeping the cervical spine long, the jaw passive, the corners of the eyes flowing to the temples and the temples flowing into the hair, into the ground. Keep the elbow tips firm so the action of the arms is still really extending and opening the armpit skin, the armpit chest, the ribs of the armpit. And as you press the roots of the thighs down but pull the elbow tips back, press the chest open by allowing the bolster to move the back ribs, the dorsal spine, the thoracic spine up to open the chest and feel more and more length and freedom coming to the abdominal cavity, making that space, helping the tightness that's there to release, to relax, having a smooth, soft breath that evenly distributes the breath to the left, to the right, up, down, feeling yourselves everywhere from inside. And now bring the arms again back out to the side, using the hands to gently push yourselves back up, shoulders back, chest open, before untying yourselves from the confines of the strap and releasing the legs. We're going to change sides now, so crossing your ankles with the left leg in front, this is Sukhasan, the first option, or bringing your left leg into half Padmasan, and then if you can, bringing the right leg on top into full Padmasan. And then go ahead and take your strap, even if it's just your ankles crossed, use the strap, put it over the legs, and tighten up so the outside edges of your thighs feel some support. This is going to help the inner groins to relax and thus the abdomen to relax. Lying back, feeling your way back, lift the buttocks, move them towards the knees. Roll the front shoulders back, curve and arch the upper back, reach back with your hands, find that length in the side trunk, that length in the abdominal cavity, push the roots of the thighs down, away from the stretching of the arms. Move the trapezius muscles down the back. Keep the palms facing each other, the elbows straight. As the arms get longer, the trunk gets longer. As the trunk gets longer, there's more and more release in the abdominal cavity. In all of this, the face is passive and quiet, the brain passive. And now bending your elbows and retake with your fingertips, your elbow tips, pulling the elbow tips back to the wall behind you and down to the floor. And simultaneously pushing the shoulder blades, the dorsal spine up with the action of the bolster to open the sternum, to broaden the nipples, the breastbone, keep the clavicles long, keeping in dialogue with that breath inside the body, pressing the roots of the thighs down, the buttocks directionalized towards the knees, the tailbone moving to the pubic bone and the pubic bone rising up through the navel to the bottom ribs, up to the sternum making that long journey of lengthening the anterior spine more and more so that always the front spine is getting more length than the back spine and the back body is slightly pressing in, bringing an inner firmness to the openness of the front body. And then releasing the arms and stretching the arms out to the side, using the hands to slowly come up. Feel the openness of the chest before unstrapping yourselves and releasing the legs. Putting our equipment away now, so moving the blankets, moving the bolsters, the blocks to the side so that you have space around you for the next pose. You'll just need a strap. 
and then having your strap handy, go ahead and lie down on your back on your mat. We're going to be coming to Jatara Parivatanasana, which is a twisting pose. So keeping the knees bent, the feet on the floor, the inner knees touching, the inner feet touching. Bring the feet off the floor and put the loop of the strap around your legs all the way down and then tighten the strap up so that the legs will be held firmly together, nice and parallel, without any extra effort on your part. Make sure the sides of the neck are even, that you're lying right on the back of the skull and extend the arms straight out to the side so the hands are in line with the shoulders. And now bring the knees down to the right, turning and gazing down the length of the left arm. Jatara Parivatanasana, simplified version. So the strap is holding the legs, which allows you to release more and more the abdominal area. Use each inhalation to lengthen more and more the front spine and use each exhalation to create softness so that the abdomen can gently begin to roll from the right to the left. The organs gently being squeezed like a sponge that's getting light pressure as it's being twisted. So old blood is exiting. New blood will be able to come back in, bringing new fresh vascularity, turning, twisting, rolling the right lung to the left. And now bring the legs back up and bringing the knees now to the left and turning and gazing down the length of your right arm. Simplified Jatara Parivatarasana on the left hand side. So feeling the intactness of the legs being held by the straps, use the inhalation to lengthen your front spine and use the exhalation to create an atmosphere of softness. Receiving the spiral, gently feeling the left abdomen rolling to the right, the left lung rolling to the right. And then bringing the legs back up and gently bring the feet to the floor. Making sure the lower back is pressed onto the floor, bring the feet off the floor again, move the hips to the left and bring the knees again down to the right. Try to bring the knees as close as you can to the right elbow. With an exhalation, turn and twist down the length of the left arm. The second time will be easier to find softness. Looking for more and more softness as if you're receiving the twist rather than making it happen, moving out of forcing the abdomen or tensing the abdomen in any way, allowing it to unfold, to spiral, to open allowing the inner body to gain space, to gain freedom. And then bringing the legs back up, move the hips a little bit to the right and bring the knees now down to the left, bringing the knees as close to the left elbow as possible. Keeping the feet alert and turning and exhaling, rolling down towards the length of the right arm. Settling into that softness, into that broad receivingness and allowing the left abdomen to roll to the right. Feeling the rotation continuing up the trunk, the left lung to the right lung, the clavicles long, the chest open. Softness and relaxation, length and passiveness in the abdomen, quietness in the face. And then bringing the legs back up, undoing ourselves from the straps and placing the feet back on the floor. Make sure the buttocks are moving towards the heels by lifting them up a little bit, moving them manually towards the heels. Feel the length, the freedom of the front chest, the freedom of the front abdomen. Arms out to the side. And now lift your right leg up and cross your right leg completely over your left. Hook your right foot behind your left calf. And using your left hand, pull the legs over to the left and extend and turn and twist to the right. Supine Garudasan. Relax the chin, the jaw the tongue. Use the inhalation to lengthen the front spine. Use the exhalation to flow with that rotation, left abdomen to the right, left lung to the right. Roll the shoulders back, keep the clavicles long, the chest opening and the back body pressing up to open. The breath smooth and even. Before gently bringing the legs back up, uncrossing. Again lifting the buttocks, moving the buttocks towards the heels, shoulders back, lengthening the front abdomen. Stretching the arms out to the side, observing that length, imprinting it in the cells before lifting the left leg up, crossing the left knee over the right, hooking the left foot behind the right calf and bringing the legs over to the right, stretching the left arm to the side. Supine twisting Garudasan. Keep the front shoulders rolled back, the clavicles long, the face and jaw, the front throat soft. Turning and twisting, finding the rotation through length, through softness. The right abdomen rolling to the left, the front abdominal cavity getting longer, broader, softer. The right lung rolling to the left, the back body pressing in, opening, releasing, bringing aeration space. And 
mat, then gently releasing, uncrossing, bringing the feet back to the floor, adjusting, centralizing, feeling the evenness from the left to the right. We're now going to be coming to some supine standing poses, which sounds odd, but you're about to see. We're going to be doing Parashvakonasan. So stretch your left leg straight out so the left heel is in line with the left corner of the mat. Then bending your right leg, reach with your right hand and place it around the outside edge of the right knee, the right thigh. Left hand on the left hip, pulling the left hip to the side. Bring your bent right leg to the right as you pull with your left hand the left hip bone to the left. Keep the left leg charged, the left heel pressing down. Try to stretch more and more the front abdomen, bringing length. And also roll the right abdomen to the left. Roll the shoulders back, keep the clavicles long. Press the chest open from the back body. Feeling the groins widen, the abdomen stretch. Pull with your right hands to bring the bent leg, the outside edge of the bent leg, closer and closer to the floor and roll again the right abdomen to the left, pulling with your left hand on the left hip bone. And then releasing, preparing to change sides. So first of all, finding that evenness again, and then stretching the right leg out to the right corner of the mat, bending the left leg, holding the outside edge of the leg with the left hand. Right hand is on the front right pelvic bone as you bring the left leg to the side. And as you bring the left leg down towards the ground, keep rolling the left abdomen to the right, and using the hand to pull the front right pelvic bone more and more to the right so that the right abdomen doesn't go to the left. The left abdomen is in fact rolling to the right. Feel that stretch, that broadness you're creating. Keep the front shoulders rolled back and the chest open. Pulling, stretching, making space. See if the outer left thigh will come closer down towards the ground. But keep rolling the left abdomen to the right. And then exhale and release. And we're now going to roll over to the right hand side, pushing ourselves up and taking a little bit of equipment for our next pose. Setu Bandha Sarvangasan. So you're going to need a block and a strap. And once you have those, go ahead and lie back down on your mat. By now your abdomen should be feeling a lot better, a lot more opened, a lot more energy in there. We're going to continue this opening with a slightly stronger opening. So the strap is going over the thighs so that the knees don't roll open. And then you're going to go ahead and lie down on your back. Then take your block. You have three heights to choose from. The lowest height, and then the middle height, and then lastly, the top height. So decide which one is appropriate for you, for your level. The feet are on the floor. Make sure the buckle is tight, really holding the legs in. Then push into the feet, lift the buttocks, and place the block, your choice of height, right underneath the tailbone. So the lowest part of the spine. Make sure the feet are facing forward, the knees are facing forward. Directionalizing the sacrum, the buttocks towards the knees, towards the feet. Roll the front shoulders back, the trapezius muscles moving down away from the ears, the sides of the neck even. Make sure you're lying right on the back of the skull. And then stretch the arms behind the back, behind the block, interlock the fingers. And here we are in Situ Bandha Sarvangasan. Keep making sure that the arms are long or spiraled or opening the shoulders or opening the chest, that the feet are parallel the inner arches of the feet lifting, the inner ankles of the feet lifting. Feel the block pressing the tailbone up to the pubic bone. And go with this action. Keep moving the buttocks towards the knees and pressing the tailbone firmly up with the block to the pubic bone. And then with the inhalation, draw the pubic bone to the navel, draw the navel to the front ribs, the front ribs to the sternum, the sternum to the collarbone, bringing that glorious length to the anterior spine. And see if you can go further, create more sensation, a feeling of more openness. What can you adjust from inside to make more space, to open up to that space inside the inner body that wants to unfurl, that wants to lengthen, that wants to broaden. Keep allowing the front shoulders to waterfall open down to the ground, the sides of the neck even, and watch for little hardenings of the front throat, relaxing the chin, the jaw, the throat. Pressing the arms down to lift the back ribs up, Keep pressing the arms down to find more ascension, a feeling of inner ascension, of risingness. Check that the buttocks are still moving towards the knees, towards the feet, keeping the lumbar long. And when the lumbar is long, the abdomen also can find length. The pubic bone can lift, can lengthen, can enact that engagement, that length, of the entire abdominal cavity and all of the organs found within. Bringing curvature to the middle back, to the upper back, press the shoulder blades in. Feel the back armpits rolling to the front armpits and feel the front shoulders rolling back again. And now release the interlock of the fingers, keeping the arms stretched 
and then change the interlock of the fingers, coming now to the other side of our Setu Bandha Sarvangasa. We press firmly down into your feet, and as you press down into the feet, lift the inner arches, lift the inner ankles, push the buttocks to the sky and to the knees at the same time. Feel the block directionalizing, pushing the tailbone to the pubic bone over and over again. Using your inhalation now to draw the pubic bone up to the navel. Feel the length coming to the bottom half of the abdomen. Experience that. And then the next stage is to draw the navel up to the bottom ribs, the left bottom rib, the right front rib. Broadening, lengthening that top half of the abdomen. Feeling that space between the bottom ribs and the top abdomen. And then drawing the sternum up past the breast, the nipples the chest, the clavicles, rolling the shoulders back again, repressing the arms down. So creating that inner energetic circuit, that loop, and in that way creating more and more length unfolding. And now press into the feet and lift the buttocks completely up off the block, lifting up as high as you can, keep the back legs strong, the back buttocks firm, tailbone to the pubic bone. Press the arms down to lift up higher. And then moving the block, you're slowly, gently going to come down to the floor, Make sure your lower back is completely on the floor, arms out to the side. Feel your evenness. Before releasing the strap, taking the strap off the legs. Gently rolling over to the right and pushing yourselves back up to sitting. So having stretched the abdomen, we're now going to go and kind of massage it with some blanket movement. So taking the bolster and two blankets folding one blanket and putting it at the end of the bolster, this is going to be for your forehead. Widen the knees apart a little bit and pull the bolster in. And now the second blanket, this is going to be our massaging technique. So you're going to make a roll in the blanket and then you're going to pull the blanket right into your abdomen, pull the abdomen up over. So you make that space, you make that length, you let the blanket penetrate as you come forward to Yoga Mudrasan in Virasan. The forehead is resting on the blanket so that the nose won't be squished. Keep pulling the inner elbows forward so you bring length to the upper arms, length to the armpits, and of course length to the trunk, to the left waist, to the right waist. You'll feel the blanket, the pressure of the blanket pressing into the organs. Allow the organs to be soft, to yield, to absorb the blanket. Don't let them press the blanket out. Make as if you're inviting the blanket into that abdominal cavity, into the organs. And they have to make that space and draw the blanket in. Keep the sides of the neck even, the trapezius muscles moving down the back, having depth in the neck where the neck and the shoulders meet. The jaw passive, the tongue passive, the ears being drawn in towards each other. And then slowly, gently, coming back up, we're going to replace the blanket so it's even more penetrative. So lifting the gut, folding it over the blanket, moving the frontal ribs over the roll. Change the cross of the arms and come down to the other side of Yoga Mudrasan and Virasan. Move the trapezius muscles down away from the ears. Ensure that the sides of the neck are even. The skin of the forehead is moving towards the nose. And keep moving the inner elbows, the part of the elbows that are touching the blanket, forward towards the wall in front of you. So you make length, lengthen the arms, lengthen the armpits, lengthen the waist. With an exhalation, soften and deepen the groins, absorbing the front thigh into the hip sockets, gently pushing the buttocks back and inviting the blanket into the abdomen allowing the organs to soften, to yield, to draw the blanket into them so that there's a kind of internal massage going on with the breath and the blanket and the yieldingness. Keep gently pressing the back ribs in so that there's no protrusion at the back. And then inhaling, looking up and releasing. Moving the blanket out of the way and then putting your hands in your abdomen and just using the fingers to massage, to move in there going round, going in deep. Try to feel where there's still blockage, where there's still hardness, where the body won't accept. And then release. So we've stretched, we've opened, we've now massaged. There should be a lot more movement, a lot more freedom for you, whatever the problem was, whether it was eating too much or constipation. And we're now going to bring this all together in a wonderful experience of supported Uttana Padasana. So you're going to need two blocks, two blankets and a bolster. So placing the blocks like I am and taking your first blanket and making a roll and placing that roll on the block. Second blanket folded in half and on the floor in front of the block. So there's the setup and again you can adjust what needs to be adjusted 
the roll of the blanket, for instance, if you need a little bit more when you're lying down, you can reach with your hands and roll it higher to support the cervical. Then turning around, your legs straight in front of you, placing the bolster on the front thighs to help push the front thighs down, which helps release the abdomen. And begin to lie back, and you need to find the sweet spot. Roll the front shoulders back, feel the block pressing into the shoulder blades. The neck should be completely supported by the rolled blanket. If it's not, you need to make the roll a little bit thicker. Keep the legs alert, the heels pressing down, the toes facing up and the bolster on the front thighs reminding you to press the front thighs down in this way bringing more space to the abdominal cavity to the sides of the trunk. Allow the block to penetrate the upper back. Too often we're overarching the lumbar which in turn cramps the abdomen. When we start to bring length to the lumbar and we bring curvature to the middle and upper back we bring much more length to the entire space where most of the organs are, particularly all of the digestive organs. And so with that length and with that spaciousness we give the organs also more freedom to work, to do their job oxygenate and now bringing the arms to the side again putting the hands on the floor and gently pushing yourselves back up just going to make a little adjustment so lowering the blocks lying back down making sure the buttocks move towards the heels rolling the front shoulders back feeling the support of the block on the upper back evenly stretch the arms back bend the elbows take hold of the elbow tips with your hands Keep lengthening the backs of the legs, stretching the backs of the legs, kneecaps facing the sky, heels pressing down, feet alert, space between the toes. Let the bolster press the front thigh muscles to the bone, down to the ground, and from there draw the pubic bone up the navel, up to the left front ribs, the right front ribs. Feel that broadness, that evenness flowing. Pull with your hands to stretch the elbow tips back to bring more length to the trunks, more length to the armpits. Broaden the breast, broaden the nipple. Broaden the sternum, keep the collarbones long. Keep the trapezius muscles moving down, away from the ears, down the back, flowing back, down towards the buttocks, the buttocks moving towards the heels. Relax the jaw, relax the tongue. Let the eyes rest completely in the eye sockets, being turned inwards. Feeling that coolness, that softness in the brain, even though the body is stretched, alert, open and expanding. Keep pressing the back ribs, the shoulder blades, the dorsal spine up through the density of the chest, penetrating, opening, broadening again the side ribs, lengthening, feeling that demarcation, that space between the bottom ribs and the top abdomen. More and more space being experienced, more and more freedom, allowing the temples to flow down towards the ground, and in this way finding that openness, that clarity. And then gently releasing the hands, using the hands to push yourselves back up to sitting and coming out of our supported Uttana Padasana. And we'll be coming from here to Shavasana. So you'll just need one blanket folded in half to support the neck and the head. And then sitting, extend the legs out so the heels are in line with the corners of the mat so the legs have some width. Lying back, lift the buttocks slightly, move the buttocks towards the heels so the lumbar retains that length. And if you have the bolster still next to you, take the bolster and go ahead and put the bolster on your front thighs. And then rolling the front shoulders back, extending the arms out to the side, diagonally away from the body so the sides of the trunk have spaciousness, they don't feel cramped in any way. And closing the eyes and settling into Shavasana, into quietness. Having a soft, smooth inhalation and a soft, smooth exhalation. Feel your evenness, feel the support of the earth. And in this way, settling more and more deeply into a state of surrender, of release, of letting go, of letting loose. Relax completely the head to the floor, soften the front throat, soften the jaw, soften the tongue. Allow the outer corners of the eyes to flow towards the temples. And gently draw the inner corners of the eyes backwards towards the brain. The forehead, the frontal lobe of the brain descending, resting into the back brain. The eyebrows melting, flowing away from each other, creating more spaciousness between the eyebrows. Allow the shoulders to be completely heavy, to rest completely. And that softness trickling down the arms, through the elbows, the forearms, the wrists, into the hands and the fingers, pooling and melting into the floor. Let the spine rest completely on the floor. Let the hips be broad, be passive, be resting and heavy. 
the abdomen completely resting on the spine, soft. Allow the ribs to release their grip from the lungs, the intercostal muscles softening, the lungs broadening naturally, the sternum, the solar plexus, the diaphragm yielding, melting, and the abdomen resting more and more on the spine, on the floor. The groin soft, the pubic bone soft. Let the thigh muscles completely release their grip on the thigh bone. The legs gently rolling open. The inner ankles to the outer ankles. The roots of the toes resting, the soles of the feet to porous. Receive the breath, receive the softness. Yielding to the vehicleness of this experience. In that passiveness, allowing the experience, allowing the naturalness of the happening of the breath, of the softness. Resting in that. And now slowly, gently, without disturbing this quietness, bring the palms to the front abdomen. Rest one hand over the other, right over the navel. Inhaling in through the crown of the head, Exhale the energy out through the arms and out through the palms of the hands into the abdomen. And again, inhaling in through the crown of the head and exhaling out down the length of the arms through the palms into the abdomen, energizing, healing. An energetic cellular transformation. And then gently moving the bolster, moving the hands, and rolling over to the right-hand side of the body. Slowly exiting our Shavasan. Slowly awareness rising back to the surface. And using the hands to gently push yourselves back up to sitting, coming back to this day, to this external reality, taking a last seat on your blanket, crossing the ankles. Pulling the buttock bones back and out to the side, shoulders back, front spine long, feel the space in the abdomen, deep inhalation, deep exhalation, observe the difference, sides of the neck even, face quiet, and then gently open the eyes. I hope the entire abdominal area feels better, clearer, freer. And I hope we practice again together soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Goodbye.